Good evening, dear students. This is Kush Pathak, and we are back again with uh, another topic of literature for Grade Ten, both NCERT and CBSE. Right. This is Part Forty Nine and Book First Flight and Poem Number Five for Amanda. Okay. So what are we going to do today? Is I will recite the poem for you, and I will explain you stanza by stanza what this poem wants to mean. Okay, and however, I have also specified the hard words here. Okay, so you will pay attention. I'm sure about it. And if you have any doubts on this topic or on this poem, you can keep rewinding this video. The poem Amanda, which we are going to do today, talks about the problem that uh, you know, today's child faces. Okay. Often it so happens that when a child reaches to some stage of uh, his or her life, he or she starts feeling that uh, you know his elder members in the family, uh, you know, are interfering in his or her personal life. Okay, here is one such poem which will talk about how a child feels in such a way, but how also a child accepts the freedom. Okay, but uh, here the stanzas which have been given to you. They talk about. Uh, there are two characters that we are looking forward to in this poem. First of all, uh, you know we are not specified whether it is uh, you know the mother or any of the other member in the family. But uh, the another character that we are going to learn is of course the girl called Amanda. Okay, it's a direct address to Amanda. And so far in this poem, we are going to learn how the elder member of the family. Keeps on pointing out, uh, you know, that kid about something which she shouldn't do, okay, and she keeps on doing it. And uh, you know, uh, as a reader or as a third person, we feel that that's the kind of constant interference that a child feels like uh, she has in her life, okay. So let us see what this poem has to offer to us. This is a poem, okay, and uh, I will read out the stanza for you. But before I read the stanza for you. I will read the introductory part to you. It says, every child feels that she or he is controlled and instructed not to do one thing or the other. You too may feel that your freedom is curtailed. That means you know you may feel that you know your freedom is curtailed or your freedom is uh, you know uh, put to restriction. Okay. Write down uh, some of the things that you want to do. So what at home you could do, uh, you know, once you are done with this poem, that you could list out the things that you are denied for, okay? And of course you can ponder upon those things. And this is the story of every, uh, you know, child who goes through this phase of his or her life. Maybe us or when we were of your age, we also felt the same. And no wonder if you feel the same, okay? So let us start with the first stanza of this poem called. Amanda from the book called First Flight. Okay, so the first stanza says, "Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda." So this score line talks about the kind of uh, you know rigorous instruction given uh, by the elder member of the family or most uh, you know. Uh, Frequently or most often, you know, we feel like it is the mother of the child, Amanda. She is instructing her what not to bite her nails. Don't hunch your shoulders. Okay, hunch, bend forward. That means you know, in a very silly manner, to bend the shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight. What does slouching mean? What is slouching? Yes. Sitting in a lazy manner, yes. You know, often as a child we don't think how we are sitting, right? Had it been grown up, uh, you know, we would have realized that there is always a manner of sitting or standing up or talking, uh, you know, in front of any elder member of the family. But here, being child, totally nature of childish, uh, you know, is seen here, and that's the reason why you know the mother or the elder member of the family is constantly, uh, you know, uh, instructing her not to bite the nails. Okay, not to hunch the shoulder, not to bend down the shoulders. Okay, not to sit in a very lazy manner. Okay, and uh, she also instructs her to sit up straight. Okay, 
this are the clear instruction in the very first stanza we know that the mother or the senior member of the family is instructing her but next we are also uh, talking about uh, you know if you will have this physical copy of the book you also figure out that there is one stanza and an alternative uh, a way you will find the stanzas in bracket that means those brackets talk about the character amanda or that's the voice of amanda we can also call it in that way okay so we know that in first stanza that the mother or the elder member of the family uh, you know instructs her not to bite her nails okay uh, you know instructs her uh, not to bend the shoulders and also instructs her to sit properly sit up straight well let us see what she has to say you know there is a languid emerald say now this is the very beautiful description imagination okay of amanda okay and she i don't know wonder this instructions we have in each stanza but at an every alternate stanza we have the feelings or we also have uh, you know the beautiful imagination of amanda uh, you know given here let us see what she imagines okay she imagines that there is this languid emerald sea okay what is this languid it's a slow moving relax so if you have ever seen the ocean and it is a very smooth flowing on the ordinary days of course so she says that you know there is this uh, languid emerald sea this giant you know expanded sea okay where the sole inhabitant is me that means where i am the only one and no one else is found there that means you know she talks about the freedom that you know over this giant ocean that spread a giant ocean you know very steady ocean there is this me okay who is the sole inhabitant over there who is the only one who is living there a mermaid drifting blissfully all right a mermaid you can also call it as jalpari okay so a mermaid what a mermaid drifting peacefully blissfully yes so she you know being mermaid she feels like she is a mermaid and also she is moving in a very slow manner and she considers herself to be blissful okay that means with complete happiness without any kind of tension without any kind of worry she is the only inhabitant over there and she thinks herself to be mermaid and she's drifting she's moving slowly very peacefully very happily you know so one stanza talks about the instructions that she has to follow and the other stanza talks about her own self her own imagination okay what she considers herself to be I hope the second stanza is clear to you. Let us look on to the another stanza. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. Three big instructions we have here. First, you know that elder member of the family or the mother of the family, uh, you know the child, the child's mother. She talks about uh, whether Amanda has finished her homework or not. whether she has tidied her room or not okay and she feels that uh, you know she has given her to do what to clean her shoes as well but it looks like none of these instructions have been uh, you know uh, completed by amanda because she is in her own dreamy world she thinks that she belongs to this beautiful world right so three instructions we know first you know that elder member of the family or the mother of the child talks about whether the child has finished the homework or not whether she has tidied the room or not or whether she has cleaned the shoes or not okay but do you really think as a reader what i feel is that none of the instructions have been fulfilled by the child okay let us see what child has to say i am an orphan roaming the street i pet on soft dust with my hushed bare feet the silence is golden the freedom is sweet yes this three lines beautifully tell you that how the child wishes to be set free this three line particularly talks about what kind of freedom the child requires this three line talks about what kind of approach she wishes to have she thinks that she is an orphan like how orphans are not guided not supported not responded okay uh, you know they don't have anyone's uh, help okay they are free they can do their by own okay so she compares herself to be like an orphan who is roaming in the street without any kind of interference from any of the elder members or any of the person in the society she considers herself to be an orphan who is wandering around in the streets okay 
I pat on soft dust with my hushed bare feet. She feels that, you know, there is this dust over uh, the land. And, you know, with the bare feet, uh, you know, she, uh, she wipes uh, the dust over the floor. Okay? And, you know, she makes different patterns over the dust. Okay? That's what she does. She considers herself. She thinks that she's an orphan. Okay? She wants to, uh, you know, wander around the street. And what she could do is, you know, make patterns over the dust with her bare feet. Yes. And without any kind of interference from anyone. That's the kind of freedom she wishes to have. Don't eat the chocolate, Amanda. But before this substance, there is this one line which says the silence is golden, freedom is sweet. So this particular line talks about how important the freedom is for the child. She thinks that without speaking anything, you know, just silently she wants to make the patterns over the dust. She wants to roam on the streets, uh, you know, with bad feet, okay, without any kind of interference from anyone, like an orphan, okay. She feels like, you know, this kind of silence is golden, right? And she feels that this kind of freedom is very sweet, where there is nothing, uh, you know, so-called uh, restrictions that she's going to have it. Let us see what next answer has to offer to us. She says, don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne. Acne means pimples, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? Yes. Despite the entire two stanzas of instructions, you know, that elder member of the family or the mother feels that Amanda is not listening to her. Okay? What does she say? She says, that don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your egg, Amanda. So by eating the chocolates, she gets acne. Okay? And, uh, you know, uh, the elder member of the family or uh, the mother feels that, you know, she is being unheard, you know, so she raises her voice and says, will you please look at me while I'm speaking to you, Amanda, because, you know, Amanda is in her own imaginary world, and the mother or the elderly member of the family feels being ignored, okay, so she or he, you know, instructs her to, uh, you know, look at her or to listen to him or her, that's what she says, let us see what uh, happens next, yes, the last two stanzas, this stanza is for Amanda, she says, I am Rapunzel, I have not care, life in a tower is tranquil and rare, I will certainly never let down my bright hair, yes. So now we know that she is at the pick of her imagination and she considers herself to be, who? Oh, she considers herself to be Rapunzel, okay, and she feels that she is totally carefree, she is not bothered about anything and anyone. Okay, life in a tower is tranquil and rare. She feels what? What does tranquil means? Calm and relaxed. So the place where Rapunzel lives, you know, or uh, might have learned in your younger days of story learning. Okay, she feels that, you know, the life in the tower is quite, uh, you know, very sound and very calm. Okay, and of course it is very rare. This kind of life, uh, you know, uh, it's not easy for everyone to have this kind of life. Okay, and she cannot danger her life by putting down her long hair. I will certainly never let down my bright hair, so the kind of bright hairs that she has. She is not, uh, you know, ready to put her long hairs down because she doesn't want to invite any kind of trouble. She cannot risk her life because she considers herself to be Rapunzel, okay, and she says that, you know, life in a tower is tranquil, okay, she says that, you know, it's a totally calm and relaxed kind of life, okay, but just by putting down that long hairs, she cannot risk her life. This is what beautiful imagination can create in one's life, okay? Let us see what the last stanza has to say, of course, with the instruction. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You are always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think I nagged at you, Amanda. Yes. Okay, the ultimate uh, last stanza says, Stop that sulking at once. What does sulking means? Being silent and bad-tempered. That means a kind of, you know, misbehavior, okay? So she says that, you know, stop this kind of misbehavior, Amanda. You are always so moody. If you want to answer, then only you would answer. So you are typically moody. You would reply only if you wish to reply. Okay, stop being so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you. Yes. You know, everyone who would be listening to me, or, you know, would be thinking that it is I who is harassing you. Okay, but no one will see that what are you up to. Or what kind of person you are, what kind of behavior you execute, you are so moody. Stop being so moody, Amanda. 
anyone who would listen to me will think that I am so harassing you. Okay? It is just that I care for you. Stop being so moody and you know stop sulking at once. This is what how the poem ends and this poem is by Robin Clan. Okay? I hope you understood this poem entirely. If you haven't understood this uh, poem, you may replay this video again. And I'm sure with the hard words in the background, you will be able to also understand it with the meaning. Okay? So I hope this video has been useful to you. And uh, please go through the hard words and please go through the stanza wise explanation again so that you may understand in a better way. Okay? Keep watching this video. Thank you so much.